everyone, Mama Mikey here and today is a quick video. These are seven games that I'm looking forward to in 2023, so let's get right into it. And maybe it's eight games, one of these is an asterisk because I just don't trust that it's actually going to be coming out next year, but we'll see, we'll see. We have already discussed what my favorite game of this present year was, and now we are looking forward and let's discuss some of the games that I'm very excited for in 2023. I tried to really just pare down the list because there's a lot there's a lot of fantastic games coming out next year I really need to take this holiday time to finish up some games in my backlog so that I have a chance of playing some of these new games before they get old uh, first on my list let's go with the honorable mention because I don't I don't really trust that it's coming out next year I want to believe I really do but it's Wolf Among Us you know season two part two whatever they want to call it the Wolf Among Us is my favorite Telltale game. I, I, I like a lot of their games, for sure, but that one really has stuck with me all this time. I think about that game every week, a different you know moment of the story or something pops into my head. I just loved it. And I was heartbroken with everything that happened at Telltale when I thought, oh, we'll just never get you know another part to that. And then they gave us some hope that they, we would indeed be seeing Wolf Among Us part two. According to the Telltale website, it still says that it's coming in 2023. I will hope beyond hope that it is because I've been waiting so long to see the next part of the story and I truly hope that it's you know up to the standards of the first game which was just a magnificent experience and I cannot wait to see what's next in the story if you haven't played that one it's the telltale game that I recommend the most it certainly is my favorite moving on to the games that I'm pretty sure will be coming out in 2023. I didn't write down all the release dates, they changed. Um, you can certainly go find them online. Um, number one on the list, and I don't mean number one in terms of favorite, just it's the top of the list. The first one on the list is Persona 3 Portable. I have played Persona 4 Golden on Vita, and I've played Persona 5 on PlayStation 4. That's it for me for the Persona series. I adored them. Actually, I played Persona 5 Strikers on Switch, which is, you know, an offshoot, but I love those games. They are incredible. I would really like to play Persona 4 Golden again, which is also being um, put onto newer consoles, but that's an honorable mention type thing. Um, Persona 3 Portable, I've never played, and I'm really stoked at the thought of experiencing that and getting to add another Persona game to the list of ones that I've completed. I am just really excited to see what that's all about. Um, next on the list is a little bit of a surprising one for me, but it's the Dead Space remake. I completely missed out on Dead Space when it was, you know, a popular thing. I really was not into scary things at all. That has changed over the past couple of years and very recently has continued to change. I am really starting to embrace more scary things, really starting to embrace horror a bit more. Most recently I've been reading horror books. I've gotten into Stephen King recently, which is an infinite surprise for me, but that, that's a tale for another time. So Dead Space Remake, when I first heard about it, I thought that's cool. You know, it deserves, you know, a chance to be played on modern hardware. And that's really cool for everyone that's a big fan. And then as I've sort of started to get more and more into horror myself, I keep thinking, I want to play this. I want to give this a go and finally experience it. So that has a place on the list. I am going to play it. I'm sure it'll be really scary, <laughs> but I'm looking forward to it. Next on the list is Tales of Symphonia Remastered. I've played a handful of Tales games at this point. Can I remember them all? I play, have played Tales of Hearts R, that's my favorite, Tales of Graces F, I've played Tales of Berseria, and Tales of Arise, the newest one. So I've played those four so far. I do own one on 360 that I haven't played yet. I found it used at GameStop complete and everything was radical. Um, but I really like the Tales games. So these ones that I've missed out on that I had not taken you know, the initiative yet to go back and play on older hardware, it's really awesome that they're bringing them now to newer consoles and I don't have to worry about it. So Tales of Symphonia Remastered, I have not looked into 
anything about that game because it's older and I don't want anything, you know, major uh, spoiled for me. So I don't know if it's one of the more well-regarded Tales games, or maybe it's not, but overall I think they're just fun experiences. They're great JRPGs, and if that's your thing, as it is mine, I'm just really excited for it and happy to see these being brought to the newer hardware for people like me who haven't played them yet. Next on the list, maybe I should have saved this for last, but I wrote it in the middle, so this is a game that I was yelling when I heard the announcement. I was screaming, I was screeching, you couldn't come near me because I would have just completely destroyed your eardrums. Um, what I'm very excited for is Like a Dragon Ishin. I'm excited because years ago at PAX East, I bought a Japanese copy of the game. I never thought that it would be ported, and there are fan translations online, and I kept telling myself, someday you're gonna do it, because there's no English in here. There's no English in here. And I said, you're gonna follow the online guide, play along through the whole game, you'll do it. And I didn't. But then, as you know, angels singing from above, I heard the announcement that Like a Dragon Ishin was coming to the West, and my excitement over that was just, I, I'm feeling it already. That's maybe top of the list, and partly because I still just don't believe that Wolf Among Us 2 is coming out. I'm sorry. But Like a Dragon Ishin will be the balm that I need if Wolf Among Us 2 doesn't actually come out next year. That game instead will be quite the compensation no, consolation, <laughs> and I will be just so stoked to play that because it's a game I've been really interested in. I just, it's insane to play this whole game in Japanese with an, an English guide on your computer. It's insane, and I really wanted to do it, but I don't blame myself for not. Next up is Octopath Traveler 2. I adored the first game. It's one that I highly recommend to anyone who's a fan of JRPGs, and it's gorgeous. The art is just beautiful. If you love pixel art, just, it's amazing. It's amazing! My favorite section of the world is where Ophelia lives. I don't want to give any spoilers, but she lives in a gorgeous snowy landscape, and it is just beautiful. The pixel art in that game, oh mama, it's amazing! And so I'm just really excited for Octopath Traveler 2 to see where they go. Uh, let's see new stories and new places to visit. Uh, I'm excited to see, you know, enemies and what abilities we'll have. This game was uh, very unique in terms of play style and, and the presentation was really awesome. Uh, in the first Octopath Traveler, the enemies you fight were huge on screen. They just took up, you know, the whole window. Yeah, it was awesome. I really enjoyed that. I thought it just was almost storybook-like. It was an incredible experience from start to finish, and it is a game I had a little trouble with at first. I started the game and moved, put it down for a little while, ended up hopelessly lost because I couldn't remember what I was doing. You know, it's weeks later and I'm picking this game up. But I ended up restarting it and having an even better time. It's, it's an experience I definitely recommend. And so the second one I'm hoping follows in its footsteps and I'm hoping it's a game that I absolutely adore. Next on the list is another horror game. This is Fatal Frame Mask of the Lunar Eclipse. I enjoyed my time with Fatal Frame Maiden of the Black Water. I haven't finished it yet, but I will get back to that one because I did enjoy it very much. And I didn't find it as scary as the original Fatal Frame, so I feel like I actually have a chance to beat this one. The original Fatal Frame was horrifying, but that also was a different Micah. That was several years ago. Now I read Stephen King books. This is a new Micah here. So uh, the seeing that there's a new Fatal Frame coming to the West, I like to support the series. I like to show that there is definitely a fan base here and I'd like to continue seeing the games brought here. I love the concept of Fatal Frame, the idea that you're ghost hunting, all you have is your magic camera, and that, that's, what, that's your defense against the supernatural. It's just really cool. It's an awesome concept and the gameplay is really fun. I'll say that Fatal Frame Maiden of the Black Water is not the most high quality game I've played, but you know, it's a port from Wii U, so it's kind of it's better on Switch, but it's it's not great. I enjoy the game. If you find it if it's on sale like digitally, if it's very cheap, 
give it a try if you like the concept of Fatal Frame. The story is okay, it's just the gameplay is kind of clunky. It doesn't feel like a game from, you know, 2020s, that's for sure. But I enjoy it for what it is, and I definitely want to support the series going forward. So we'll see if this next one is halfway decent. Hopefully it is, and hopefully it's pretty scary. I'm in the mood for something that scares me a bit. And last on the list is Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. I'm a huge fan of Rocksteady. I adore their previous games. So seeing them take on the Suicide Squad is going to be a pretty epic experience, I hope. <laughs> and of course, we might have all seen the Game Awards trailer that also paid tribute to the late Kevin Conroy, the amazing voice of Batman, which made me cry. I really, I hated that I was crying at the Game Awards. I was like, you didn't, you didn't do this. Jeff Kevin did this. <laughs> but I adore Kevin Conroy's portrayal of Batman across all media. And it's certainly going to be a hard experience to play through this game knowing that we won't be hearing that rendition of Batman ever again. So it'll make the game certainly much more special. I'm hoping that the game has enough magic of its own already. It's rock steady, I trust them. But having that added layer of this is a very, I'm a little bit sad. This is a very finite thing here. And I'm looking forward to experiencing it. Of course, being Suicide Squad, I expect there to be a bit of humor in there. So hopefully this isn't a game that makes me just sad. And instead it'll be one that has me, you know, up and ready to fight and really having a great time. So those were seven, technically eight games that I am looking forward to in 2023. Let me know your list. Which games are you most excited for next year? Which games do you think we'll actually get? Which ones are maybe you're a little iffy about? Like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you next time. Bye!